You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 107. And today, we've got to up-level your thinking so you can up-level your results. We're going to cover seven mindset shifts that will align you with prosperity and get you into bold action. So let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader? creative entrepreneur, or change maker, and want to magnify your impact, boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hello there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson here. And today we're going to be talking about some mindset changes. And interestingly enough, even though I'm a business coach and Um, My work is to help people achieve greater profits. I'm uncovering profit opportunities, new revenue streams, and places where people are getting in their own way. Guess what the number one thing is I work on in every client session? Mindset. As a matter of fact, it's one of the ways I get booked to speak the most is to come in and talk about money and prosperity mindset. So I'm going to share with you uh, a collection of mindset shifts I've worked on with my clients over the last couple years, and maybe a few of them will be relevant for you too. And so I'll teach you how to use these mindset shifts in a minute. But first, let me share with you a tool that's going to help you on the strategy side of getting your business up and into the more profitable, prosperous region. And that's having techniques to bring in a fast cash boost into your business. Now, we've all had those days when a client unexpectedly leaves or a launch doesn't go the way you hoped, or maybe you have an unexpected expense and you need to generate some quick money into your bank account. And I keep these 10 strategies handy uh, for my clients as well as my own business and pull them out all the time to use. And it's absolutely free. It's called Your Revenue Rush, and you can get it at yourrevenuerush.com. And there's 10 techniques that read them over and try one out in the next 30 days. I mean, who doesn't want more income in their business, right? And be sure to let me know how it works for you, yourrevenuerush.com, to get the free download. Now, let's get into these affirmations. These affirmations are ones that I design for clients when they've come in and said, all right, Melanie, I'm struggling with this. I know we had this list of things, but I never got to them because I got stuck over here in this really bad thinking pattern. Or they tell me, you know, because one of the things we work on is um, looking at where their fears are keeping them from making momentum happen or where action's not happening because they've gotten into this doubt cycle. And I I have hundreds of them, but I wanted to bring the ones that I think specifically um, are tailored to this idea of really increasing prosperity and profitability. And that I think a majority of entrepreneurs and online business owners and people who are building a business around their expertise, I think these people really struggle because oftentimes the business success is on you. Like you are the reason it's successful or not because Your thinking is tied to the decisions you make and the actions you take or don't take. And in my own uh, life, I have found that getting my mindset in the right place is huge because when it's in the wrong place, you create these really negative stories about why something won't work and why why you shouldn't do this or what people are going to think. And really, it's all just a big story we make up, but it feels very real because when you tell yourself something enough, you believe it's true. And so the work around our mindset is just as important as your strategy. So if you are doing the right things, but they're not, you're not getting the right results, then most likely is you're not doing them enough or you're corrupting your actions by uh, having a negative uh, thought pattern, which keeps you from really playing full out. So I may actually have to throw a couple bonuses in. We'll see. We'll see what comes out. Now, the first one came up with a client of mine who, um, and I've had several clients that had that tackled this over the years, but I'm thinking of someone in particular last year who is so good at what she does. She's so, um, she's so great. Like she has this beautiful presence and she's so graceful and she's a, a really powerful transformational healer. But she had all this stuff that was in the way of making money. And so 
we create crafted the mindset of I love making money and am fully committed to being prosperous. Now you want to use this one, just like my client, if you have some conflict about making money. So you want to do what you do, but the things that actually make the money start to feel conflicting to you. So that means you know you should do it, but you don't. And so this client of mine at the time was really having an overwhelm with the idea of making money, like something about it was feeling bad to her. And I think, you know, what we uncovered was she had some old programming around um, having money being bad. And, you know, we, we dig up all these belief systems from being a child and things we learn from our parents or people around us that are influential. And even our culture or religion sometimes can infuse thinking or a a pivotal person who has impacted you, you as a child. And for her, this meant that she had to rewire some thinking and we call it recoding, like where I go in and I recode her thought patterns because she wasn't doing the things that would make money because she on some level thought she might become a bad person or do some things that she wouldn't feel proud of if she had more money. Now, the second part of this is really important. Because you might love making money, but if you're not fully committed to being prosperous, you will find yourself saying yes to things that don't really serve you. And you'll allow distractions and fears to rule instead of really dropping in and like, I'm all in, I'm going to do what it takes. I'm not going to let any excuses, any excuses get in the way anymore. And it starts to teach your decision-making self, like the part of you that actually makes the decisions, it teaches that part of you, we're all in. You can't let that fear get in the way anymore. And it starts to create a neural pathway that says, I love making money, making money is good, and I, and I love the things that I do to make money. Okay, so sometimes we don't love the things we have to do to make more money, and that gets in the way. Now, that leads me to affirmation number two, like this, I also call them mantras, so if I, I might exchange those words. And um, that is, I am a badass in sales and marketing. Okay, now just notice, how did you take that one? <laughs> did you kind of cringe a little bit, or did you go, yeah, I am? So I work with a lot of people who have softer skills. Um, they're more uh, service-based and they tend to have a lot of heart and soul in their work. And the idea of selling what they do makes them cringe. And I personally relate to this one a lot because the first couple years in my business, I literally had a story that selling was, was gross. Like nobody wanted anything to be sold to them and that I would be a horrible salesperson. And I really resisted everything that had to do with marketing and selling my business. But then I did some very powerful mindset work and that changed. And I started to realize that I had made up a story about it that wasn't true. And yeah, the truth is nobody wants to be sold anything. But, and this is the re reframe, when you actually embrace the art of selling and marketing and you find ways to make invitations to your client that is inspiring and gets them more of what they want, it's no longer icky for anyone. It feels good, it feels expansive, and you're actually helping someone solve a problem. And so letting them know how you can help them is a gift. And so when you really, and maybe you don't like the word badass, so you could use I'm excellent, or I, I, um, I have a easy and effortless process to sell and market my business, right? Whatever works for you, your version. But I would really challenge you to go into the badass because a badass is like in a different kind of energy than, than the rest. And if you struggle with sales and marketing, <laughs> become a badass. Find your version of success with that. What you want to notice is if you tend to pull away or you resist or you make up excuses or you procrastinate, doing the things that would enroll clients into your business and attract them, then you've got some issues here. You've got some resistance that needs to get cleared up in order for your business to grow in the prosperity department. You might be the best at what you do, but if you aren't selling and marketing, then you're not badass enough to have prosperity and profitability. And no, you don't get to delegate it all the time. You know, I think you really have to embrace this to a certain degree. And 
So I was working with a client last year who she'd been in business for like 30 years. And she always struggled with the sales and marketing. And it wasn't because she wasn't amazing. It's that she had decided she wasn't good at it, she, especially on the marketing. And so she wasn't doing a lot of things that would actually get her better results. And so what we had to do is find a way for her to do the things that were effective that were actually aligned with her superpowers. And that's what happens when you commit, like, I am going to just own this. I'm not going to let this one go. I'm going to figure out how to really be excellent in this area. Then you find ways to do it that are more aligned. So that's number two. Number three, I simplify my focus to multiply my results. So I worked on this with a lot of clients this last year. But there's one in particular, it's a um, organization that I coach the leader on. And she was really struggling with always introducing a new offering, always bringing something new out to get the revenue up. And of course, there were a lot of things that were getting initiated that would fall apart or never went anywhere or weren't profitable. And the team was really confused. And that's because she would just get an idea and go, let's make this happen. And there was no structure to a plan and there was no way to move it out there effectively. And so there was a lot of effort with very little results. And again, this is something that's come up with my clients over the years, over and over again. I've had to work on this one. It's probably why I recognize it. Simplifying your focus means I allow myself to focus on the core offerings that have the greatest trajectory, that have the greatest impact to my clients and to my bottom line. And that allows you to multiply the revenue, the profitability, and it gets you better traction. Like the things that have been on your list forever will finally start getting done because you're not spread too thin. So I simplify my focus to multiply my results. The fourth one is I say yes only to opportunities and ideas that are aligned and expansive. So um, I was working with a woman Early last year, I've been working with her for about 18 months, and she was really struggling with doing something in her business. And it was a great idea, but she was putting the brakes on. And so she would talk about it as this great big idea. She wanted to do it, but wouldn't take action. And so we came back to what's off track. The problem was, even though it was aligned with where she wanted to go, It didn't feel expansive to her. It felt very scary and very overwhelming. And so, of course, you know, especially if we're in touch with our feelings and our emotions, we are not going to move on something that feels what I call contracted. It feels like you shrink every time you think about doing it. And that's why people don't take on bold goals. That's why really big ideas are just ideas and you never move on them because on some level, it's not expansive. The other side of the equation is it may not be aligned. It may be exciting to you, but if it's not aligned, and again, you're paying attention to your goals, it it will feel off track. So I have a woman that um, interviewed for the Own Your Bold Inner Circle, and she was saying, I have this really big idea and it's really exciting to me, but I'm not able to figure out what to do. And she was getting, it was all getting confused. And the problem was it really wasn't aligned. It wasn't aligned with the things that were important to her. And so she couldn't start taking action because there was a part of her that knew that. So when you say yes to opportunities and ideas that are aligned and are expansive, You are giving yourself permission to be the boldest, most powerful version of you. And that's when that unstoppable, fierce energy kicks in. Your focus goes up, your momentum goes up, your inspiration goes up. And and really like giving yourself permission to say no if it's not at that level. And I guess that's the, the other side of this coin is when you're saying no to opportunities that aren't aligned and they don't feel exciting to you and they're not expansive and you're doing them because you think you should, that's a really hard rock to push up a hill. And eventually it burns you out or you feel resentful towards these things and you just stop doing them and you, then you hate your business and you want to quit. <laughs> so really look at how do you get into alignment and make these things feel expansive. Now, one little note on this. Just because it doesn't feel expansive doesn't mean it's not the right idea. You may need to do some other mindset shifting 
You may need to look at where the resistance is because you may have some other story that's keeping you from really seeing the value of it. And I would highly recommend you go through the Own Your Bold Challenge if it's a great idea and you know it's aligned and your coach or people that you're in your mastermind with are telling you, yes, you should do this, but it's not feeling, you're not getting into action, figure out why. You may be limiting yourself because it doesn't um, seem right because you've made up a story about it. All right, let's move on to number five. And this is, I play to win, not to lose. So the story behind this one is, I see a lot of people playing it safe. And at first glance, you might think, Melanie, why would this be a problem, right? Like playing it safe means I don't put myself in financial risk. I do things I know that will work. And I, you know, like I'm protecting myself from failure. And so you might think that's a good thing. But actually, it's a form of fear. And so this last year, I worked with several clients who they had been playing not to lose. And what, what that was showing up was as their business wasn't actually growing. They just kept circling around a very low amount of income, trying to find a better way to, to kind of not lose, to grow the income. And what was happening was their mind, their thinking was so small that they were kind of paralyzed at that level of success. And that wasn't the success they wanted. And then they were there so long, they started justifying it and rationalizing it and saying, well, I guess this is what I'm capable of. It's not really what's true. What's true is when you play not to lose, your mind is is stuck in a, like, I don't want to take a risk. I don't want to get too bold. I don't want to, I don't want to rock the boat. And so you find the ways to basically try the same thing in different packages. And so this one client I was thinking of, she had the biggest breakthrough of her entire uh, entrepreneurial career uh, going through the On Your Bold program and this thinking of, I have to change the way I think. And instead of playing not to lose, I have to play to win, which means I gotta, I gotta take the limits off. I have to be willing to step out of my comfort zone and and stop like limiting what I think I can do or what I can afford or what I'm willing to take a risk on and get clear, what do I want? And then be all in and commit to that. And so what we did was we finally implemented a leveraged offering and we upped her rates like by almost 50%. Like we really brought her rates up and she started booking six and I think it was five and six figure deals this year. No lie. Like her, her ability to crest what she thought was possible up to that point just was shattered. And that's what happens when you play to win. Like when you're so committed to the outcome, you will not let your excuses and your fears hold you hostage anymore. Now the next one is kind of a a sister to this and, and it, again, inspired by some client work this year is I really own the most confident, courageous, and bold version of myself. So this is going to mean different things to different people, but this is for you. If you find that you hold yourself back, talk yourself out of going for it, uh, fear investing in a coach or a mastermind, Um, where you are afraid to be seen or be more visible. So one of the things I see happening a lot is a lot, especially women, but this does happen for men too. On some level, you're afraid that if you're, if you're, if you're able to be more visible, that something bad will happen and you fight yourself and, and all the strategies that will work because your confidence and your self-esteem is low right now. And maybe you took some hits lately, maybe some things you tried didn't work, or you've had somebody, you know, feeding you some nonsense that you're not good at this, or they don't see it, or they don't understand why this would work. Or maybe you've got some scripting from your past, really, you know, young self, you know, where someone told you you weren't good enough. I don't know where it came from, but if on any level you struggle with feeling good enough, 
This one's for you. Find your version of this. I am capable or I'm willing to be capable. I, I confidently pursue my goals. I boldly move my goals forward. The bold one works for me. So whenever I feel myself getting nervous or, ooh, that's scary and I'm resisting something, I start working the bold version. It's like, I am a bold action taker. I boldly move my goals forward. And I know that means it's time to do something that scares the crap out of me. And oftentimes that's what it takes to get unstuck and to move mountains that you've felt like you've been stuck at the, at the bottom of a mountain that you can't climb. Take a bold action, become bolder, commit to a bolder vision, set a bold goal, get confident and courageous and do something that you have been scared to do and putting off. For many people, this will be hiring a coach for the very first time because up to now you have told yourself you could figure this out on your own. Nobody figures it out all on their own. What happens is you keep circling around the same mistakes and piecing together all these different things from little conversations. And that's because you're scared to invest in your future success because you don't see where it's coming from now. But if you take the leap of faith and you take a bold action and you commit to a coach that you know will help you because you've seen their track record and, and you have rapport with them, then you've got to do it this year. It's got to be the thing you do because you owe your dream the greatest chance of being successful. And, you know, most of us just don't have all the pieces and parts that you're going to get from being in a coach or being in a good mastermind with a coach that facilitates it. Now, the last one, and this is for the people who really are ready to scale and grow beyond um, like the high uh, five figures, uh, six figures, you're really ready to take on new levels. Uh, I want you to use the, the affirmation, I am the CEO of a profitable business. Now, why would I use this one? That's because there's a lot of people that make a lot of money who are not profitable. They're good at making money, but they're not good at being profitable. And so that next leap for you may be going from, I make high six figures, but it all goes back into the business to, this business is actually a profitable business now. And that might mean you have to really look at what your offerings are and start honing in on your greatest profit centers. So I have a client I've been working with for almost four years now, and we've been taking her through different levels of, you know, from the very beginning of, I just want a lifestyle, you know, I want to have some time away from my business to now I need team and I need my team to perform better to, oh, wow. Okay, we're spending a lot of time on things that are really low revenue producers. And each stage we've been able to identify where the block is. And so now the, the next level is how do we move from big revenue, low profits to big revenue, big profits. And that is a different game than I just got to figure out how to start making money. So the focus for you, if you have not been profitable and you're not hitting those higher levels of revenue without killing yourself is really start looking at your role as being the CEO of a profit centered business, which means you know which offerings bring you your greatest profitability and you expand those first. Doesn't mean you don't ever do anything else, although you may want to simplify your focus to multiply your results, just saying. The idea uh, number seven here is that you really commit to it and you get all in and you really start to understand your numbers. You start to understand what's working, what's not working. Uh, if you've ever watched the show The Prophet on CNBC, you know that Marcus Limonis is always talking about how to get profitable. And he has a three-part process. It's very similar to mine. I, I, I have a few other steps involved. But for the sake of this conversation, commit to being profitable. Hey, even if you're just getting started, you can still be profitable. But we do have to focus on revenue and, and the focus needs to be getting you good at marketing and sales. And that may not always be the most profitable thing to do first. So those are seven of what I consider highly prosperous mindsets. But if one of these doesn't resonate for you, I would encourage you to do a couple of things. One, look at where your greatest fear is or where your greatest resistance is 
and say, if it if I had the opposite belief about that and it was expanding my success in that area, what would I think or believe? That is going to be your mindset. And two, get a coach or go through my Money DNA 2.0 program. It is one of the best money mindset transformation programs on the planet. I have people going through it who have told me it has radically changed their life, radically changed their ability to get higher levels of financial success. And it's caused them to become the business owner and the entrepreneur that that they always wanted to be because they learned how to think prosperously. So figure out your game plan, try these affirmations, try these mantras and really start noticing, am I really in this mindset or am I doing something else? Work on incorporating the mindset. I'll look forward to hearing your thoughts on this in the Amplifier Success community or if you're part of Own Your Bold, come share it there too. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at Amplify Your Success Podcast. Dot com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking. Join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing, when you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.